Globally, WHO estimates that 92% of people live in places where ambient air pollution exceeds its clean air standards. Now, it's important to remember in the face of these very numbing kind of statistics that these deaths are just the tip of a pyramid of serious illness, but non-fatal illness, suffering and impairment, and they don't include other health effects that are clearly or nearly clearly established, but can't yet be quantified in these global burden estimates. What's causing the worsening air pollution crisis, especially in low and middle income countries? First, increasing population and economic development are driving increases in modern sources of air pollution, like electric power generation and motor vehicles. For example, in India, where electric power demand is growing very rapidly, it's estimated that by 2040, the generating capacity may need to triple compared to what it is today, based on uh, anticipated development. History tells us that environmental improvements rarely occur without pressure from civil society. The union and the communities it represents can help build advocacy in countries where it is not yet strong. A priority in that advocacy should be ensuring that investments are made to expand access to clean cooking fuels. This measure would be a truly transformative health solution for the poor to use to borrow the union's mission statement for the nearly 3 billion people worldwide who don't have access to that essential uh, service for healthy and um, modern living. So in sharing this brief sketch of a complex problem, I don't mean to understate the difficulty of making real progress. It took many decades in my own country to achieve that, and we're not done yet. But cleaner air, especially for the most vulnerable, is possible. To make it happen, we have to insist that public health be at the center of the global environmental agenda. Thank you.